Is it, is it kosher if I ask them a question first? Absolutely. Okay. Tell me, how, how much time do you spend in school talking about race or race relations or racism, uh, things that have to do with um, issues that are very important to our society? Like in my school, we don't talk about race, so we might do a little bit, but probably just, probably just spend 45 minutes on it. Okay. Basically, in my AP U.S. history teacher, he relates race to a whole lot of the uh, issues that uh, we had to learn in class, mainly about um, World War II and basically the, um, the aftermath of Japanese American citizens. Internment? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, at my school, it depends on the t um, topic that we're studying, mm -hmm. whether we talk about racism or not. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, that helps me because it's, it's been a little while, as Sonia said, uh, since I've been in the eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> the scientists among us will tell us there's no such thing as race, right? That there is, there, there is a human race and um, that all the uh, African-American, Asian-American, Latino, um, ethnically Chinese or Filipino or Vietnamese, those things are not related to DNA, that in fact there's a, there's a very uh, interesting series called Race um, in America um, in, in which there's a high school group that, that does experiments about tracing DNA and so you get a group that sort of looks like this group, you know, a very mixed group and what they discover is that if they, tra if they actually track their DNA, folks who look like Isidore, the, the closest um, match to his DNA is in Central Africa, it turned out. And somebody looked like Shayla, the closest match for her was in Norway. It's very, it's very scientifically, we know that this notion of race um, really forms in the, in the 18th and 19th centuries in the United States and, and in the rest of the world. So this is something that's fairly recent in world history, that, that in fact there were different cultures and people were fighting one, one another because of religion or territory or tribes or whatever um, throughout, throughout history. But in fact, the notions that we have about races um, are very recent in world history. So we're thinking how we're going to also in, incorporate um, people of Asian American and Pacific Islander descent to try to help people understand how it is that this unusual um, mix of people came together uh, to form this extraordinary country we call the United States of America. So we'll take a few questions. Um, why don't I just kick it off with one question and then that way you guys have a little extra time to think of something. When you went off to become an academic and to teach in college, did you ever think that, did you even like museums? Did you ever think that you would end up being a director mm. and a curator of a museum? Had you ever really spent no. much time in museums? I, I'd spent some time, like most people, you know, field trips and stuff and been bored <laughs> some of the time. Um, no, no, but, but you know, when we started uh, doing ethnic studies, it was always really clear that one of the reasons we're doing that is not just to educate our own selves about our own history for self-esteem and pride and all that kind of stuff. But we wanted people to know um, who we were, that, that the larger society, the society around, it, around us, had to understand and appreciate who we were and respect us. Go ahead, Jasmine. Um, did, your, sorry, um, did your parents help motivate you with your career? And if not, was there any teacher who really played a major part in your mm. choosing of your career? Oh, great question. You know, my parents were pretty um, unusual, I think. They, 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 did, they, they did not tell me what they wanted me to do. They said, you should go to school. But the, the, the thing that mo motivated me most, though, was that I grew up on a farm. It was damn hard work. <laughs> so I did everything I could not to have to go out in the field. So I said, oh, Mom, I have to go um, study at the library. Or I got to do some reading or something. But yeah, they, they, they actually were very encouraging for me to, uh, to continue my schooling. Yeah. Has this always been your childhood dream? No. Uh, you know, I, I think I didn't know what, what I wanted to, as a, as a kid, I think I wanted to be a, a, um, 
ball player. I wanted to become a professional athlete. And I used to be 6'5", 280. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I joined the Smithsonian and they beat me down. But um, now in, co in college, actually, I thought I was going to be either a lawyer, <coughs> so I could make a lot of money, or a chef, since I like to eat. And so if I didn't have a lot of money, I could cook my own uh, food. So no, I, I, I really, I was a late bloomer. I mean, I, I, it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted what I wanted to do. And even then I wasn't, you know, I wasn't great at it. I, I just, it just sort of fell into stuff. And so become, coming to the Smithsonian, Sonia, was um, a real kind of a revelation. It was a lucky, a lot of things are luck. You, you have to sort of work to prepare yourself, but then things fall into, into, into place when, when, when you're prepared. Uh, last question. One more. Being that you taught a course in Asian American Studies at um, University of Maryland, what material would have been integral to the curriculum? Ah, great question. Um, well, a lot of early immigration, one of the things we try to teach is that people from Asia have been in, in the, what we call the United States now, from before the, this country was a country. So you had, you had uh, Chinese in New York City bef bef before um, in the 18th century, before the, the uh, revolution, for example. We had Filipinos in the bayous in Louisiana. Um, and there's a lot of stories about why, how that happened and why that happened. Um, and, and then uh, the building of the railroads, building of industries. So a lot of labor history is really, really important. And World War II, somebody mentioned, uh, the mass... Um, internment of uh, people of Japanese descent, 120,000 people without trials, without hearings, without cause. Those kinds of things about why civil rights and human rights are important. Those are really important things. All right, thanks so much. Thank